Welcome to yet another YouTube video series presented by a geek about his favourite new toy. Hello and welcome to my Voron 1.8 build series. I hope it's going to be a series and I don't just lose interest and there's one or two and then nothing. Um, well, why am I doing this video to start with? First of all, um, if you don't know what a Voron is, um, I'll cover that in a little bit. But I'm doing a video because there's quite a few videos out about the V0, quite a few about the V2 and various builds that people have done. What I can't find is pretty much much at all on YouTube or anywhere apart from some proper niche areas about the Voron 1.8. First important thing to know about Vorons is that yeah, 0, 1 and 2 doesn't mean that that one is better than that one and that one is better than that one. They are different printers for different things. There's a brilliant video by uh, Nero 3 d which I'm not going to recap his, but I suggest you go and watch that if you want to kind of get to know the differences between all the different Vorons. Uh, there's also the Voron Legacy and the Voron Switchwire. Um, and also there's nobody doing videos within accent that's from this side of the Atlantic Ocean, I don't think. Um, so yeah, what is a Voron? Basically, Voron 3D printers are something that until two weeks ago I didn't know anything about, and I probably still don't know very much about, but I've kind of got hooked. It's not a 3D printer like a Creality where I can go onto a website, log in, and go, right, buy me one of them, and it'll turn up on my doorstep with some nice printed instructions and I put it all together and I print, such as an Ender 3. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that sort of thing, it's just being clear this is not what a Voron is. A Voron is basically an open source design that has been developed to kind of, I think the, the core principles were they wanted a, a quality printer that didn't compromise on things. But it started, I think, as like a um, a commercial venture, but building 3D printers and 3D printer kits anywhere other than China basically wasn't feasible. project went open source. It's gone from strength to strength since. Um, as I alluded to earlier, there's lots of different models of Voron. They all do slightly different things, going from the V0, which is this cute, tiny little 12 centimeter build plate affair, uh, through to 350 by 350 by 350, um, not quite Core XY, but similar to a Core XY printer. Um, best bet is, go to the website, have a look around and get a feel from it. What really drew me to Voron is it's brilliantly documented uh, in terms of the assembly instructions are all there, laid out clear step by step. Um, you can also, on the website, create yourself a bill of materials for the printer you want in the size you want. That forms, uh, you know, the base of your Voron build. There's also then the Voron sourcing guide where they've got where they suggest things are and where you suggest you get them from to ensure compatibility, vendors people have used, that sort of thing. If you're watching this and you're also in the UK, definitely join the... Um, British chat bit called Brexited, funny enough, on the Voron Discord server um, because that has a sourcing guide but with things that we can get hold of because some of the things on the sourcing guide are American brands and American only shops um, and there's a few European ones which I think are starting to get there with shipping to the UK since Brexit but it's not as easy as life once was. Um, but yeah, the Voron Discord is why, after initially finding the website and the documentation and being impressed, I kind of really fell in love with the project. It's friendly, it's helpful, there's a few different channels. A lot of people are not that fond of Discord because they prefer the, the forum structure, you know, a more layout. So here is this section, in there's a topic about this, and then all the replies relating to that are underneath it. Next question, all the replies... Discord is slightly segmented, so there'll be, for the different printer versions, for 
the tool heads themselves, that sort of thing. But you ask a question and people will chime in and you have to kind of, there is a search function, but sometimes you have to then try and unpick where the answers came from. But like I say, people in there don't get shirty around, you know, oh God, somebody's asking a beginner's question again. And I went and asked a couple of questions and saw some of the interaction that went on there and it's absolutely brilliant. I'm not going to build much in the, well, I'm not going to do anything building wise in this video because, like I say, two weeks ago, I didn't know what a Voron was. The hints and tips that I'd give for somebody who has had a look at the, uh, maybe the Discord servers, had a look at the website and the documentation, is don't start buying straight away. This is mistakes I've made. I've started buying straight away and I went, oh, I love this, I must have this, great. Order, order, order. You know, went keyboard frenzy and ordered loads of stuff. First thing I did was order everything from AliExpress because that's where a lot of the sourcing guide, before I knew about the UK version of the sourcing guide, points to AliExpress and a lot of affiliate links. All well and good for a lot of cases and some stuff that comes from there, especially because I got it in the AliExpress sale, was really, really a bargain. So I paid less than £50 for... Not quite a mosquito hot end, but something that's pretty much a long way there. There's also a brilliant video about choosing hot ends from Nero that I'll link as well below. Um, but there's things I didn't know about. So there are two UK vendors who pretty much are Voron specific. And there's also some European vendors that will ship to the UK now. And I think... Um, Fermio Labs, which is one of the bigger ones, are testing it at the minute. They're just kind of hunting out people for that. Um, but also things like your screw fittings and that sort of thing. I ordered it all from AliExpress because I was there and it was late at night and I wasn't really thinking straight. Whereas I didn't go away and think, right, well, rather than ship things halfway around the world, is it going to be cheaper or comparable for me to get it shipped from somebody... 50 mile up the road on eBay, or even looking at Amazon for some things. I mean, you're also going to need your tools as well as the actual things from the bill of material. You're going to need a decent set of um, Allen wrenches. You're going to need a way of soldering things, all these sorts of bits and pieces. AliExpress may not always be the answer. It might be the answer in a lot of cases, but it's not always going to be the answer. Um, the one thing I'm going to leave you with for today is, you know, the large part of building a Voron Yet yeah, you can have all the bits you have to buy, such as your rails uh, that actually make up the frame, the actual um, aluminium print, uh, heat bed that you print onto, and all your bits and pieces like that, and your stepper motors. But again, you can get UK sources for this. Don't jump in and just order everything on Ali. Ask questions, especially in the uh, Discord channel for your location. People will be more than willing to share who they've used, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. Um, it's kind of a, it's a learning exercise. The main, the other part that you can't buy, well you can, but it's not officially available, are the actual printed parts, because a large part of a Voron is actually printed, in a lot of cases, on a Voron, or at least on a different 3D printer. These parts are um, recommended to be an ABS. I've seen things where people have tried to not use ABS because everybody panics and goes, oh my god, ABS, oh, I can't print that. And it's come out badly. It doesn't stand up to the wear and tear and it doesn't stand up to the sort of temperatures that you're going to get around heated beds, around your hot ends, that sort of thing. Um, you can print them yourself if you've already got a 3D printer. You can find somebody who you might know who has a 3D printer who may be able to print you up a set. I mean, unless they've got a lot of 3D printers or a very good 3D printer, it's going to take them a while. I currently have an Ender 3, which is sat over here, hiding behind this blanket in front of this little alcove to my left. The reason the blanket's there is I'm printing ABS on it, and it doesn't like a draft. It doesn't like a cool breeze because the ABS just retracts too quickly, and you end up printing things that are more of a, a banana shape rather than a nice flat because it just doesn't stick to the bed. 
you can print things yourselves, you can get a friend, or there's also, and this is something else that I quite liked about uh, Voron, the Voron Print It Forward um, initiative, which you go on, you basically reserve yourself a place in the queue when you register. Um, you tell it where you are, what sort of printer you want, what sort of hot end you're going to choose, what colours you want, and don't worry about the rest of those bits. The important thing, if you're going to go that route, is just get yourself on the list. As you get higher up the list, and when you're almost at the top, you'll get matched with somebody who will print the parts for you. The pricing for it is all agreed regardless. So everybody gets the same, depending on, you know, it doesn't matter if they're in a country where filament's going to cost them a bomb, or they're somewhere where, you know, filament's dirt cheap and the electricity's cheaper. It's a set price, plus shipping. And that varies by printer and the complexity of how many printed parts. It won't be a complete set, but it will be all the bits you need to build a functional printer. You can do that. The waiting list can get quite long. I was about 120-ish in there. Um, to be fair, that's because I panicked and thought, I can't print ABS. Because everyone tells you, don't print ABS. Oh, it's terrible. It's deadly. You know, it'll burn your house down. You'll, It stinks. It's terrible. Well, I'm sat in the same room with ABS printing over here. I'm not going to lie, there's a slight odour to it that you notice if you leave and you come back, but it's not that bad. I'm about 80-90% printed so far. Um, I've had some warping issues, yes. 3D LAC has been my new friend, because that got recommended to me. Um, shock horror, I'm going to link another Nero video about printing ABS for beginners. It can be done. And if you have a 3D printer and you don't want to sit for months on the Print It Forward program and you don't want to go to Etsy or AliExpress or somewhere and kind of pay over the odds for what are basically some 3D printed bits that somebody's, you know, just farming off and selling, it's doable. It may need some tuning, you may need tweaking, it may need things that you're not quite used to, but again, lots of people will probably be around and help you with that. I know I've had some kind of... I've been quite lucky. I've not had that many issues printing ABS. Some people are trying and having various issues with printing their ABS parts. But again, people on the Discord server, really helpful, really friendly. Um, I would say, if you can, can pick your primary and accent colours from eSun's ABS Plus because that's kind of a, a much better ABS print. That's actually referenced in the Nero video as well. It just seems to behave a bit better than my accent colour I chose, which I've had a lot more failed prints on. But yeah, that's it for today. Um, I've rambled long enough. You know, hit like and subscribe if you want to see the next video. Um, the more people do that, the more likely I am to do one. But like I say, I'll kind of keep you abreast of things as they go and as and when deliveries turn up. I'll see you next time. Bye.